Greetings and welcome to Glitched Out, Episode 5, your weekly podcast of everything gaming related. By the fans, for the fans. And joining me this week on the show, it's not Israel Pacheco, no, 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 making his first appearance here on Glitched Out, a Canuck Podcast alumni, it's Big Boss. Hello, everybody. How are you doing, BB? Ah. Uh. I'm all right. Considerably better now that I've got coffee in my system, considering I've been up since 4.30, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is your first time on Glitch Shape. Uh, welcome to the new show. Oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to uh, getting started. And uh, yeah, it's been a while since I even did a podcast. I can't remember the last can podcast I did either, for that matter, so. Yeah, so. wow, it has been a while, because you weren't on for the final episode, were you? I was not. I missed that one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, it's been a while. It's nice to be back. It's always fun to do these things and discuss all the nerdy news of all different sorts. <laughs> Indeed. All right, so we're going to kick this show off like we do with every Glitch David episode, and we're going to talk about the games that we've been playing this previous week. Okay. So, uh, why don't you get us started? What have you been playing? Um, I don't think I really gamed this last week, to be honest. It's been, I don't know, I just, what have I been doing? No, <laughs> let's not get into this again. Just before we recorded the podcast, I tried to remember what we did on Friday, and it was a really painfully slow process, and made me feel kind of embarrassed about the fact that, like, I don't know what I did. <laughs> but let's face it, you've just been watching the Final Fantasy VII Remake trailer over and over and over <laughs> Actually, what I have been watching over and over and over is replays of Duncan Keith scoring the goal that ended up winning <laughs> the Stanley Cup. I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> I've been so hockey obsessed, it's ridiculous. Um, but while I didn't do much gaming this last week, the games I have been playing most recently is uh, I've been slowly working my way through The Witcher, mm -hmm. which is such like... It's almost, there's too much to do. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Because I feel like I'm a bit, of, I'm not like a full-on completionist, not the way you are, considering I don't go for platinum trophies on, like, games <laughs> as much as you do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, in fantasy RPGs like this, I like to explore areas. I like to do the side quests as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing so many of the side quests, and I'm only in the second area Yet I've probably sunk about 20-some hours into this game. Wow. And I've hardly touched the story. And I'm just like, there's still so much to do. And it's starting to feel like, I just want to play this fucking game. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm enjoying it. It's not bad by any means, but it's just, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's a bit of my, like, wanting to complete these quests that's getting to me. Where, yeah, I'll play, I'll play it for, like, four hours. And then I'll set it down and be like... I don't feel like he, I even accomplished anything. Wow. <laughs> and it's it doesn't help that these areas are big, too. And it's, like, if that's your thing, great. But I'm I'm at a point where I'm starting to get borderline frustrated. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I, there's so much to do. Which, you know, it's great for those who want that. I don't know if I'm ready for all of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of had that kind of feeling back when Skyrim first came out, too. Yeah, for some reason, though, The Elder Scrolls doesn't make me feel like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Because, I mean, you want to talk about open worlds. <coughs> Elder Scrolls is a massive open world. Mm -hmm. So it's... I don't know. I really can't explain why this is getting to me so much. <laughs> Especially since I've been wanting like a good like RPG to sink my teeth into lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Now, now that Batman's out, I, I got a friend who picked that up. I hope he did, and I hope he's working towards beating it so I can play that. <laughs> I think that'll be really, that'll be the distraction I need. Because mm -hmm. actually, as it stands, I'm actually I took a break from The Witcher for that very reason, uh, and a friend of mine lent me Rage. Rage. Uh, that's the Bethesda shooter that came. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, I went and saw Mad Max for a third time with him. <laughs> uh, he, well, it was his first time seeing the movie. Okay. And actually, 
I know we're not supposed to talk about movies on this show, but it's funny because uh, he says to me, he says, I hope you know that because this is the third time you're seeing this, you've like hyped this up so high, right? <laughs> like my expectations are really high for this movie. And I'm like, oh no, I hope I didn't like set the bar too high. <laughs> then afterwards, like that was amazing. That was so good. And I'm just like, I told you. <laughs> uh, but anyways, and then he was talking about Rage because he really enjoyed that game. And he says that, you know, Mad Max really reminded him of Rage. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, you know, do you have it? Like, I'd like to borrow it and check it out. And it, it kind of is almost like Borderlands in a sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever played it or... Uh, I own it, but I never did play it. Okay. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Borderlands, but less good, in my opinion. I think Borderlands was the better, kind of, that style. I also find the guns in Rage feel very weak and not responsive. Okay. Like, I, I shoot enemies a lot, and it, like, it doesn't feel like I'm really hurting them. Mm -hmm. That, that kind of frustrates me. Whereas in Borderlands, I could tolerate it because Borderlands feels distinctly like this is an RPG. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas Rage feels more like a shooter, so it's like, why aren't my guns doing what I want them to do? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I, it, it's all right. Not great. I, I pardon me, I expected a, a better uh, first-person shooter from it, but yeah, it's entertaining enough. Cool, cool. That's what that, those are the two games I've been playing. All mostly. right. <laughs> uh, as for myself, over the past two weeks, I've been playing a variety of stuff. Um, I started playing a bit more Tales of Hearts are on the Vita, getting through that story a bit more. Game is so good, so very good, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I would highly recommend it for anybody who owns a Vita and wants a, you know, kind of a traditional JRPG to play through. Um, other than that, I fired up the old Wii U, blew the dust off of it, and decided to download some of the, uh, indie demos that they had, had on there for their Nindies at Home, uh, nice. little event they had going on, where they had demos of upcoming indie games. Uh, I tried out Lovely Planet, which was kind of a first-person shooter type deal, okay. if, uh, FPS was mixed with, I uh, Mixed with maybe the... Uh, I don't know how to explain the game. <laughs> it's really cutesy, but it's a shooter. It was weird, but kind of fun. I think it's already out on PC, so... Um, I tried out Freedom Planet, which was basically a Sonic the Hedgehog ripoff in every single way possible. <laughs> I think you shared a picture of that on Twitter. I did, yes. Okay, yeah. Cause I, I'm just looking at that picture, not even seeing gameplay, I, I it's like, yeah, this definitely screams of Sonic. Mm. Yeah, just because it even had, like, loops and everything you run through. Like, you build up speed and you run through these, like, loop things. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. But that being said, it was still fun, though. There was yeah. a bit more combat options into it as well, so. Okay. You know, it's an actual... You could say a good Sonic game for the first time in years. Yeah. Uh, game too. The, <laughs> the old ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the third one I tried was Rive, which was kind of a shooter type deal where you're in this like little spaceship floating around just shooting things. Yeah, it was fun. Kind of like a little puzzle aspect to it. Okay. It was all right. Uh, the big thing I did play on the Wii U, though, I finally got around to playing my uh, final Club Nintendo Platinum reward that I picked, uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I played the first level of that, and it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, probably, and just a note here on the podcast now, apparently I am the Nintendo guy now here because Izzy sold his Wii U. Isn't it funny, isn't it funny though, how... <laughs> Like, if you go back to, like, one of the early, early Canuck podcasts, mm -hmm. how we were just like, nah, not Nintendo. Like, you know, <laughs> we, we look at Nintendo, we're like, yeah, you know, thumbs up for, you know, kind of staying cool and true to yourselves. Yeah. But, eh, and now you're all like, are you even a PlayStation guy anymore? <laughs> 
Oh, my doubts. <laughs> yeah, I turn on my Wii U once every three weeks. I'm the Nintendo guy now, for sure. <laughs> um, I actually have something to add about what we've been playing, but I'll let you finish your list. Oh, okay. And the last thing I've been playing, the big thing I've been playing, of course, has been Batman Arkham Knight, which I've essentially been playing nonstop for the past week. Uh... Holy shit, this game is good. I mean, this is good. <laughs> so, better than City? I want to say yes. Oh, excellent. Because you have a more open environment to explore. Like, it's massive compared to City. Um, is it massive like The Witcher? <laughs> no, no. It's nowhere <laughs> near that kind of massive. <laughs> um, Wait, that'll deter me. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> <more> massive games <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's really fun uh i'm 50 50 on the batmobile because it's fun racing around the city just plowing through cars and the environment and whatnot that's fun and some of the missions where you had to chase cars and everything that was enjoyable and same thing with the riddler puzzles that involved the batmobile those were fun what okay. hasn't been fun is the tank missions that you have to do where you go into battle mode in the Batmobile and you kind of strafe around an environment avoiding gunfire coming at you and blowing up on man tanks. Okay. That is really slow paced, kind of tedious and yeah, it just it just gets annoying and they do so bloody many of these throughout the entire game. Like, not just optional side mission stuff, because there is... One of the side missions does focus completely on doing these tank battles. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be fine with that. But they do it a lot in the story as well, and it I just find that it really slows down the gameplay quite a bit. Okay, yeah. I, I, I skimmed through IGN's review of the game. And the tank was listed as the, like, only low point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me as well, because everything else, the combat, they've refined that even further. Nice. Which, I mean, they already had an excellent system, so... Mm -hmm. uh. Uh, the story is just phenomenal. I finished up the main mission story thread there the other night, and, yeah, it just blew my mind how well that was done. Great. Yeah, no, I've I've got another friend who I know picked up the game, and uh, she was telling me about it. And between her, uh, what she said, mm -hmm. and between what I've been reading from you, it just makes me want to play it even more. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I I would avoid spoilers if you can. Yeah, I've I just wanted I've avoided I I got one minor spoiler. Okay. And which kind of disappoints me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just I'll, I'll sort of say what it is. It's in regards to uh, a certain boss battle that was extremely underwhelming, especially given the fact that I'm a very big fan of said character. All right, let's just... Oh, I think I know who you're referring to. Yeah. Well, he's I, I, he's or, uh, revealed later on, essentially. Well, I, I don't know. I'll just, I'll just uh, type it out for you to know. I don't want to give it away for the fans. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um... Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but, I haven't done that boss battle yet, but yeah, I heard about that as well. Yeah, just given who the character is, I expected this great battle, and then I hear about what the battle is, and it's just, oh, that sounds really underwhelming. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's not much in terms of boss battles in the game, oh, though. No? Oh, okay. Uh, there really isn't. Then uh, I wanted to ask you, without spoiling anything... Okay. Uh, did you figure out who the Arkham Knight is ahead of time? Uh, I had my suspicions when I went through a certain part of the game. I was like, oh, okay, that that's most likely who it is. Maybe not, but most likely that's who it is, and sure enough, that's who it was. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I just wanted to... Well, let's just say this. Rockstar, or uh, Rockstar, Rocksteady's whole, it's a brand new character, what they said beforehand? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of bullshit. <laughs> okay. 
I'll, I'll understand more when I get around to playing the game. Just, yeah, wanted to keep that as spoiler-free as possible, not only for myself, but for anyone who's... Yeah, it's still far too early. <laughs> oh, yeah. And besides, the spoiler bunker is reserved for the static screen podcast. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I guess. But yeah, uh, that's essentially what I've been playing this past I just two wanted, weeks. Okay, I just wanted to go back and add that uh, over the last couple of weeks, the friend who I went and saw Mad Max with, uh, I've been playing a bit of Wii U at his place. Ooh. He has Super Smash Bros. <laughs> and it's like, man, this makes me want a Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fun game. I mean, of course, it's all the smashes. They're lots of fun, but mm-hmm. it's fun, too. So. Yeah, I still need to get the new DLC for that. Yeah, actually, he had me come over, and we played through all the new new stages and stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, and tried out all the new characters. The first time I played as Ryu, I kind of sucked. <laughs> but then the second time, I, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to get the, hand of him, the hang of him. Mm-hmm. He's a little slower-paced. Yeah, that I, I I thought he would be. Mm-hmm. I, I I like kind of quicker paced characters like Captain Falcon. Yeah, and uh, uh, quicker characters who also feel heavy. I don't like characters who like float around, mm-hmm. feel light. No, I like them to like move quickly, sort of thing. Okay. But, yeah. Apparently, if you play Ryu as like you would in a Street Fighter game, he's really good. Like if you do the like combos. Oh, really? and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think of that much, but... Yeah, because you can play him two ways. You can play him like a normal Smash character, or you can play him like you would in a Street Fighter game, and if you do it the Street Fighter way, you can pull off stronger moves. His moves will be, like, stronger and whatnot. Okay. Hmm. I'll have to try that next time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that does it for me. I just wanted to throw that little last extra bit in. All right. So, with that, that does it for our bin playing section. It's time to move on to, uh, I was going to say the news, but we do have a segment before that. It's that time of the month again. It's July, so it's time to do the games of July. Um. And July is kind of, um, sparse, to say the very least. <laughs> Usually the summer tends to be the kind of the, a little bit of a drought. Yeah, especially July. Yeah. I don't know why, but, yeah. But, anywho, uh, starting off on the first, we have Rise of the Incarnates for Windows. On the second, we have R No Surge Plus, Ode to an Unborn Star for the Vita. Okay. The seventh, we have Rocket League and Numa Breath of Life for the PlayStation 4. Uh, the eighth, we see Worms World Party Remastered for Windows. 10th, we have F1 2015 for Windows, PS4, and Xbox One. The 14th, we have Deception 4, The Nightmare Princess for PS4, 3, and Vita. Godzilla, The Game for PlayStation 4 and 3. God of War 3 Remastered for PS4. Roy McElroy, PGA Tour for PS4 and Xbox One. The 28th, we have... Blast Blue Chrono Phantasma Extended for the Vita. Lost Dimension for the PS3 and the Vita. Uh, the Swindle for PS3, 4, and the Vita. Uh, the 31st, we see the Swindle come on Xbox One. And in the To Be Announced section, we have King's Quest, A Night to Remember for Windows 360, Xbox One, PS3, and PS4. Magic Duels Origins for the Xbox One and Windows, and Zombie Vikings for Windows and PS4. Cool. So, so what's tickling your fancy here for the month? Well, we all know I'm a huge cricket fan, and like golf is also a <laughs> very exciting, intense sport that I'm very into. Uh, no, I'm JK. I, I'm not... Getting Rory McIlroy PGA this Tour. Is a funny note of it. This one, this is the first PGA Tour without Tiger Woods attached. Well, that's what happens when you cheat. <laughs> when your wife. <laughs> not at the game. You know, Tiger Woods is he's an honorable golf player. It's mm-hmm. not like he's not like Tom Brady. Ooh, ooh shots fired. <laughs> a little controversy for the podcast. <laughs> For those who follow football, anyway. 
<laughs> Let's put that in the title. Let me see if we can get some more views. We'll put a nice hashtag Deflategate in there. Um, no, I don't know. None of these jump out at me. The only game I'm, I'd be really interested in, in myself would be God of War 3 Remastered, but hmm. considering I, I don't really have a big desire to play Remastered God of War 3, especially pay 70 bucks or 80 bucks or whatever the hell they can charge for games now here in Canada. Uh, that one is a budget title. It's thirty nine ninety nine, I believe. Oh, that's eh, still too much. <laughs> <laughs> for a game I already own on PS3. Yeah, if this was like the first two with it as well, I'd probably be a bit more interested. Yeah, if it was an entire... If they just did a new God of War PS4 bundle with the first three and you know what throw in the Vita games too or no or sorry the PSP games as well yeah they were they already ported those for the last one mm-hmm. might as well <laughs> give it to us again <laughs> yeah do a whole entire God of War collection and yeah no that would I'd definitely be a lot more interested in but as it stands for this I've already played it I don't have too much of a need to go back for it right away but hey if it at some point maybe I will mm-hmm other than that, nothing on the list really uh, really jumps out at me. There's a lot of stuff that I actually don't even know what it is, mm-hmm. like The Swindle, or Deception 4, or Numa, or Rocket League. <laughs> uh, well, Deception is an RPG series. Uh, I know 4, or 3, sorry, was on Vita and PS3. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am interested in Rocket League. I got into the beta of that, and that was very much fun. Okay. Do you remember super power, super powered acrobatic rocket cars on the no. PS3? No. Okay, it's from the same guys. Essentially, okay. you're using a rocket powered car playing soccer, three on three matches. It is actually really fun. <laughs> That just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> it is, and it's awesome. And I think they've announced, too, that for the PS4 version, you can play as Sweet Tooth's uh, van. Oh, shit. And to think, I was just thinking about how much I want another Twisted Metal. <laughs> uh-huh. And what's this? This R No Surge, it sounds like some sort of JRPG. It's a JRPG published oh, by it? NIS. Okay. Are you getting that one? Uh, I've been tempted. I've been looking at the pre-order page for it for the past couple of days. They're almost sold out. (laughs) Is there some sort of fancy Japanese edition thing that you get? Uh, well, the only way to get the physical edition is to buy the collector's edition that they have up. It comes with stickers, the special packaging, soundtrack, and a poster, I believe. Okay. And a pin. (laughs) Ooh, nifty. Yeah, I figures you would be interested in that. <laughs> I would be, but I've got two games to pick up on the 30th, so <laughs> that's kind of a swaying me. Which are you getting on the 30th? Uh, well, not on the 30th of July, sorry. 30th of June, which has gone oh. by by the time this comes out. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm like, I don't see anything for the 30th on here. <laughs> this is. is there a secret section I don't know about? <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah, I am interested in Arno Surge and Rocket League, um, God of War, I'm in the same park as you, I'd probably pick that up if it goes on sale for 15 bucks later on. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am kind of interested in Godzilla, the game, though, I really am, but that's a full price title, so that's 70 bucks here in Canada for that. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that game does do well, though, because I would love a good Godzilla game. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, other than that, not much for this month. Uh, I think August is going to be about the same thing, really, so... Summer months, like, June tends to have a few, and then we usually slow down for the summer, probably because lots of people go on vacation, mm-hmm. and they're traveling, which, yeah. I mean, wouldn't you want to release games in the summer? Kids aren't in school. Exactly. It's like summer and Christmas. That's release your games when we have breaks, people. Mm. Stop putting out your games in September when <laughs> I have to go back to university. <laughs> I don't got time for Grand Theft Auto. 
and Metal Gear Solid when they come out in September. <laughs> yeah, September is going to be the next beast we tackle here on the show for sure. The yeah. first of that month's insane. But anyways, that uh, that's going to do it for the games of July. Mm-hmm. And we're going to move on to our news section. That's right, we got some uh, interesting news here this week. And Big Boss, you've got our first article from Polygon. I do. I really... Oh, I should go put on my jersey for this one. <laughs> this is uh, one that hits close to home. Because as I discussed earlier, briefly... I've been watching lots of hockey. I love hockey. And guess what? I love the Chicago Blackhawks. And this next article is about the fact that NHL 16 will feature two of this year's Stanley Cup champions on the cover. And we didn't even have to vote for them. I didn't have to spam a hashtag Blackhawks <laughs> uh, all over uh, NHL 15, all over NHL like I did. Hashtag NHL 15 Bergeron. Um, yeah, it features uh, Captain Jonathan Taves, and is Kane a co-captain? Do they have three or just two? I know Sharp and Keith are. Mm-hmm. I honestly have no idea. I'm going to go look at the picture. No, Kane is not a co-captain, despite him being one of the big star players of the Hawks. Mm-hmm. He's not uh, an assistant, or whatever they, the A stands for. Assistant captain, isn't it? That's what I thought. Anyway, regardless, yeah, uh, Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane are the uh, two champs on the cover. And uh, I was just reading the article briefly, even though I already knew about this, but uh, apparently this is the first time since 2010 uh, that uh, fans have not voted on the cover athlete for the game. So I guess they just decided they would uh, make it people from the winning team of the cup, which is where they announced it on the 24th at the uh, award ceremony. Mm-hmm. So, cool. yeah. Uh, it was like, It's actually funny, because I was saying to you how I'd get this game, because I, I bought an HL15, kind of unfortunately. <laughs> because, because I felt an obligation. Because, I mean, I, like, I sent out so, like, I don't know how many tweets I have on Twitter, probably like 4,000, 5,000. Mm. Probably good, like 800 are NHL Bergeron tweets. <laughs> uh, so I felt an obligation to buy that game when Bergeron won. And, you know, NHL games tend to be very similar year by year, so it's, do you really need to buy every year's? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's where I kind of resolved that this year I wouldn't buy the game unless it featured one of my two favorite hockey players. Uh, being Henrik Lundqvist and Duncan Keith. And this one comes pretty close, mm-hmm. but it's not Duncan Keith. So <laughs> I, I'm going to have to pass on buying it, despite the fact that I do love the Blackhawks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to buy it day one, that's for sure, because of other stuff coming out in the fall. But yeah, eh, maybe I might do it once it goes on sale. And wait and see how the reviews are, because yeah, that too. HL 15 let me down on that front. So it's <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely uh, if they improve on it, it could be worth getting as you know your PlayStation 4 hockey game. But mm. if they don't improve on much, then it's let's wait till next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get into our next story and. Very clever methods of paying for video games. Uh, a while ago, a dude actually sent Bethesda four, th- like, uh, I don't know how many bottle caps it was now. Uh, not 4,000. Amass- he amassed over 2,240 bottle caps and sent them to Bethesda in, order, in an attempt to secure a pre-order for Fallout 4. Well... Bethesda has actually accepted the bottle cap payment for Fallout 4. Via <laughs> uh, IGN here, the article reads, The individual confirmed on Reddit that Bethesda has accepted his unconventional form of payment, saying uh, Bethesda's Matt Gan- Grandstaff told me since I was the first person to do this, I would be receiving a copy of the game this November, and that he would be running my caps over to over to deposit them at the People's Bank at Point Lookout. (laughs) This was 
quite awesome, I have to say. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I enjoyed that. That makes me wonder how many people now are going to, you know, start saving up ball caps to be like, hey, hey, what about me? What about me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's definitely a, a one-time thing because... Yep, first to do it. That's yeah, the deal. just sort of, hey, you know, it, it, it's a good little fan tribute kind of thing when a fan would use the currency like that to do it for Bethesda to say, hey, you know, thanks for... Obviously, you're a real fan, so. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. That's cool. That, I, mean, I enjoyed reading that. Yeah, it's one of those nice little stories. But it, it, it was cool for them to actually accept the payment, though. No, exactly. No, I, I like that. Yeah. Uh, that gave them, I'm sure, a lot of good press. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially after this E3 one. Oh, God damn, they showed off a lot of mm-hmm. awesome stuff for that mm-hmm. game. But Bethesda always does. I mean... Sure, they have the you know one or two series that I don't care about, like Dishonored, <laughs> <laughs> and how I don't even care about Fallout that much, as I've said. But mm-hmm. I mean, that's just because it doesn't. It's not. It just doesn't do much for me. Like, but they do so much with their games for their fans. So it's like, I mean, I, I'd say Bethesda is probably the company that does DLC the best. Mm, yeah. Well, For, you know. After horse armor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, post Oblivion, their DLC has been good. <laughs> Oblivion was not yet there. I mean, Oblivion had some good ones like Shivering Isles mm-hmm. and uh, Knights of the Nine or whatever. True. But yeah, horse armor. <laughs> <laughs> but no, good, good on them. And yeah, no, that that was, that was a nice story. It was kind of a nice little morning read sort of feel to that one. Mm-hmm. All right, you've got our next one. Well, hey, didn't I just mention DLC? <laughs> hey, segue. Yeah, I, I didn't even plan that, actually. <laughs> just <laughs> kind of, that's funny. Um, yeah, on the subject of DLC, Star Ocean 5 will not be having DLC or expansion packs. Ooh. So yeah, last week at E3, Star Ocean 5 producer Shuichi Kobayashi told IGN that Trice has no plans to create additional content for the game. So I guess he says, uh, quote, I think Trice's sort of attitude, dot, 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 is that we want to make something very unique and new. The way we look at it is if we make a kind of okay game and reinforce it with expansion packs, that does not really satisfy consumers. So we'd like to invest all we have into the game and make sure it is as good as it gets. Then fans are looking for a complete package. If you make additional scenarios and packs, Japanese consumers would come back and say, if this content is available, why didn't you put it in the main game anyways? End quote. Hashtag thank you. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing everything right for that game so far, as, as far as I can tell. You know, it's... Like, DLC, to me, has always felt like something that should add extra stuff to the game mm-hmm. and it should feel like additions to the game it shouldn't feel like just stuff that is now there mm-hmm. like it, it's like knights of the not like again coming back to bethesda shivering isles and knights of the nine it felt it didn't feel like it was part of the first game mm-hmm. uh in skyrim dragonborn and uh Dawn Guard didn't feel like DLC as much. Like, well, they felt like expansion packs more than they felt like just extra stuff to Skyrim. Yep. Uh, Hearth, Hearthstone felt more like extra stuff for Skyrim, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, but that, then, that, you can see now, was just a test for them for the Fallout 4 creation stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, another company that does it very well is Rockstar. Mm-hmm. Uh, the DLC for GTA 4 was uh, you had the the Lost and Damned expansion pack, which featured entirely new characters in the story. Same with the Ballad of Gay Tony. It's mm-hmm. like, that's what your DLC is supposed to be like. Not just, here's some new costumes. Give us 10 bucks for them. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at you, Dead or Alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it's nice to see a company like this. Like, I mean, I've already been looking forward to Star Ocean. Five, because I loved Star Ocean 3, I believe it was, mm-hmm. until the end of time. Yeah, that's 3. Yeah, and uh, I really enjoyed it, and it's, you know, now hearing this, it's like, good, 
I'm not going to buy this and have day one content sitting on me being like, yeah, you should get this stuff too. <laughs> like you're giving me everything all at once, which is kind of a throwback to the way video games used to be. Mm-hmm. So it's, I like that. I, I like, I like this bit of news. Yep. Me too. Cause yeah, it's like, it's going to be a traditional JRPG in every sense of the way now. Actually, right. oh, oh, go oh, on. Uh, I wanted to ask you, because, uh, I mean, you play a lot of JRPGs, I, mm-hmm. I think. Yep. Um, <laughs> I don't. So I wanted to know, uh, like, the other JRPGs that you play, like, from NIS and whatever other companies that uh, they make, do they usually have DLC, or do they usually just do the one thing and give you everything? Uh, they usually have DLC. There's a lot of, like, packs for, like, specific items and a lot for like buy this pack and you'll get 5 million gold or 5,000 experience or okay. stuff like that like stuff you don't need to buy yeah. but they're there if you want to buy them and just help your way through the game Okay. like I'll be yeah. honest I did buy a few for Omega Quintet to give me money to buy shit <laughs> rather than having to grind out for that money yeah exactly just saves you time when you have like a massive stack of like 30 jrpgs you have to play exactly it's just convenience sake yeah. it's microtransactions there if you want to use them you don't have to but they're there if you want okay you know i i wanted to ask about that because see yeah, i'm like i don't know and i i mean i see dlc's becoming more and more the norm so mm-hmm. uh, there have been some too for like specific characters and whatnot so Stuff like that, which I don't really mind that much. <laughs> and they're usually priced at max a dollar ninety nine. Okay, that's reasonable enough. Unless your Tales of Hearts are, in which the costumes are pretty fucked like uh, Dead or Alive. <laughs> oh. See? Sorry, it's, now we're going on a bit of a tangent here. Uh, they have, like, what, the Dead or Alive, like, Ultimate Edition or whatever for PS4? Yep. Does that include all the DLC costumes? I don't think so. Yeah, see, like, I'd consider getting it for the costumes. If, it's like, if you have, if you put everything in here, okay. But now you're going to make me, like, pay all this money for your costumes again? Mm. Not that I did the first time, because I have principles. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, I, 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 I hate every week, like, tons of new costumes. Oh. Sorry, I won't go on a rant. That's not that. <laughs> All right, so I guess we can move into our final news story of the week, mm-hmm. which is personally the biggest news story of the week as far as I'm concerned. And that is Disgaea 5 has a release date. That's right. The new strategy RPG from NIS has a release date and a collector's edition. Of course they do. <laughs> Disgaea 5 Allegiance of Vengeance will launch for PlayStation 4 in North America on October 6th and in Europe on October 9th. Uh, The game will be available in Standard and Limited Editions. The Standard Edition will cost $59.99. That's US. I believe for Canada it is $79.99. Typical. Yeah. And launch day copies will receive a reversible, reversible cover, art book, and original soundtrack. So even if you buy the standard game, you're getting an art book and a soundtrack. Nice. Uh, the later, the collector's edition, will cost $79.99 and include a copy of the game, collector's box, hardcover art book, two-disc complete soundtrack, Usila figure, and a tear-resistant poster. It is available for pre-order at the NIS American Online store. Uh, the strategy RPG follows Kelia, a young demon who stands to end the reign of a terrible overlord named Void Dark, who seeks to enslave the countless netherworlds. I cannot wait for this game. <laughs> now, do you have this one pre-ordered yet? Or? Not yet. I'm probably going to pre-order it next paycheck. And the uh, collector's edition or the standard edition? Do, do do you even need to ask me that question? <laughs> well, well, I'm. I guess that means collectors, but I'm just saying the standard has a fair bit of stuff that it's like you know, mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I will definitely go for the collectors because I want this game to do well. Apparently it didn't sell that well in Japan, which was really unfortunate. Okay, so then it's also a matter of getting the collectors as a way of saying... Take all my money and yeah. give me more games. Uh, yeah, <laughs> basically saying, yes, these are good here. We North American fans are interested in these collector's editions. We want all you have to give us. Yep. And yeah. And uh, according to their website, they're down to 51 to 75% left. <laughs> oh, well. So they're, they're moving. They're moving, yep. So yeah, I, I'm really excited for this. The, the Sky S series is so good, and they're keeping the traditional, like, kind of pixel art type art for the game. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I am extremely, extremely excited for this one, because you can do crazy-ass combos and stuff in this, and they're hard. They're not easy games, either. Mm -hmm. I think I've only ever finished the first one, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, really, really excited for this one. And it's coming out in October, which is good because it's a month before uh, Fallout comes out. It's kind of your Eye of the Storm month, so to speak. Essentially, yes. It comes out between Fallout and LEGO Dimensions for me. So, re really good timing. <laughs> Who, who's getting Battlefront? Uh, I think Izzy is. Okay. I need more friends with Battlefront. <laughs> I'm so stoked for that, but I want to play with people. Mm -hmm. I, I'd probably be more interested in that if it didn't come out eight or seven days after Fallout. <laughs> okay. So around Christmas time, Battlefront? Uh, probably not, because December, on. December 1st we have Just Cause 3, and then December 4th Xenoblade Chronicles X comes out, which is a good 80-hour RPG. <laughs> Well, you know what? I think around Christmas time you're going to want Battlefront. Because a certain movie comes out around Christmas time. Yeah, let's be honest. I'll probably see the movie come home and buy the fucking game. <laughs> exactly. So, I, yeah. <laughs> I'll be waiting. <laughs> and I'll be like, welcome, my friend. <laughs> oh, my. But, uh, yeah, that does it for our news stories this week. Uh, some interesting stuff there. Mm -hmm. And I pulled up the wrong set of notes. Uh, back to the other one. So that moves us into our topic of the week. And what's and, that? <laughs> well, I, I really couldn't think of an actual topic to go over this week because really hadn't seen any, you know, controversy pop up. or. We have any... controversy. Deflate gate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or any real topics that I wanted to go over. So, I thought, why not? Big Boss is coming on to the show here for the very first time. Uh, a few weeks ago, myself and Izzy went over our favorite games of all time. Oof. So I thought, why not? Let's learn a little bit of Big... Yeah, well, my... Fucking hell, I'm glitching out right now. Uh, ha ha ha! Let's learn a little bit about Big Boss and what his favorite games of all time are. Oh boy, how how big of a list did you guys give? Uh, I think we went over like eight, ten, something okay. like that. And that's it was a fair sized list. I'll, you know, I'll go through like my favorite console. Or I'll go through each console pretty much. That's a good way to do it. That's yeah. the way uh, Izzy actually did it too. Kind of like the chronology of games almost. And, mm -hmm. uh, well. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of started gaming on actually a Sega Genesis. Um, never had a Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Not. Um, I got into it on Sega Genesis, and uh, actually my first real game I had, I had this baseball game that my dad got me. I never liked baseball, though, so I didn't play that much. And it was really hard, mm -hmm. at least for me, because I was like four. So I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, the first game that I really got was this uh, 2D platformer, because, I mean, it's not going to be a 3D platformer. It's a Genesis. Uh, and it was, like, it was, like, uh, Taz, like the Tasmanian Devil from Looney Tunes, Escape from Mars, I think it was. Okay. It was, uh, I'm going to Google it just to make sure I'm getting the name right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Taz and Escape from Mars, and it was, like, it was it was fun. I really enjoyed it, actually. I'll be honest. 
I played the crap out of that game. And then I, I borrowed Sonic from a friend. So yeah, Sonic gives me super nostalgia. Um, played Mortal Kombat a lot as well. Because, you know, I was five, got to play Mortal Kombat. Rip out spines and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I I wanted an N64 because all my friends had an N64. And uh, I wanted to play GoldenEye. But guess what? I didn't get an N64. I got a PlayStation. <laughs> and that changed history. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got uh, first world game Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. And I, I love the Crash Bandicoots. I played them a lot. Crash, Spyro. Then I got into uh, my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy VII, which I borrowed <laughs> from my neighbor. Uh, and he lent it to me, and it was like, shit, this game is amazing <laughs> it hooked me i played it for like years actually i started playing it when i was in grade five mm -hmm. i i kept playing it like over and over again pretty much until i was in grade eight i'd say wow yeah like i, I played it for years um in between other games too i got into uh chrono cross was another uh rpg that i loved played a lot of um, I didn't get into Final Fantasy IX until later, actually. Uh, I didn't play it until I was like 16 or 8 or 17 or something. Um, so yeah, I'd, uh, those two would be my two favorite PlayStation 1 games, as well as uh, the original Metal Gear Solid, which again, I didn't play until I was older. Mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, Metal Gear Solid 1 was not my first Metal Gear Solid game I played. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so then next up, uh, so that's my PlayStation 1, my favorite games. Uh, PlayStation 2, favorite game, hands down, no contest, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. <laughs> that was my first Metal Gear Solid game. Because uh, it came out and I remember seeing it win Game of the Year in uh, one magazine that I read. I think it was PSM at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw one game of the year, and I'm just like, this sounds really good. I should check it out. And I just bought number three without having played the first two. But mm -hmm. it worked out well because it's actually a prequel. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get enough out of it without being super confused as to what was going on. Uh, and holy crap, yeah. I, I love that. I love that game. That's my favorite. That is one of my all-time three favorite games of all time, along with Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. And another one, which we'll get to later. Um so yeah, on PS2, Metal Gear Solid 3, I loved God of War as well. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy X, and uh, Kingdom Hearts would be my mains for the PS4, PS2. Sorry. Wouldn't uh, uh, Star Ocean fall in there as well, as you uh, mentioned earlier? I, I really enjoyed it, but I wouldn't say it's a favorite. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, then on... Uh, then I played number... G, uh, I played PS... No, fuck. I played... Now I can't talk. I played uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, and I enjoyed it, but, you know, riding. Yeah, it's the weakest of the Metal Gears, for sure. It, it, it is. It is. Um, then, uh, GameCube, you know... Oh, Resident Evil 4, hands down. Yeah. <laughs> that game was awesome. Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, for sure. Along with Super Smash Bros., uh, then on Xbox, which is a system we don't, I don't talk about very much. Uh, of course, Halo 1 and 2. I, I love Halo. That's the entire reason I have an Xbox One right now. <laughs> it's for Halo. Um, uh, also, I loved the very first Fable. I couldn't get into any of the others since then, but I loved the original Fable. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic. And my actual, my favorite uh, Xbox game, which I think does not get, I mean, it got good reviews, but I feel like it's often omitted as being one of, you know, people don't talk about it enough, was uh, Jade Empire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love, like, I mean, I really like Bioware and all their stuff. But, yeah, Jade Empire, I think, is actually my favorite game that they put out. And, uh... Yeah, I, I got that on my Xbox. I got it on my PC as well. Yeah, no, I absolutely love Jade Emperor Empire. So when I actually when people ask about what type of games you'd like to see get sequels, Jade Empire is very high up on that list for me because I love that uh, mythical Chinese sort of setting. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I've always liked, you know, like Kung Fu flicks, and I like that sort of Chinese mythology. And it just, it's always interested me. And uh, yeah, Jade Empire was just the perfect presentation of that sort of lore. And uh, I, I, I love it. I love the characters, the story, the dialogue. Like, it's, it's, it's a total RPG, and it's, it's great. So that is, that's one of my, actually, I'd put it even maybe up in, in my top five favorite games. Wow. I, think, I think it's criminally underrated. People, it got good reviews, but yeah, people don't often talk about it being a favorite game of theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, so then moving on to PS3, and that, uh, well, I don't really have a favorite Xbox one, Xbox 360 game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or Halo? <laughs> well, actually, probably Halo 4. Because I, I thought Halo 3 was very weak, actually. Mm-hmm. There was a time when I really lost interest in the Halo franchise. Yeah. And that had to do with Halo 3, because I thought it was extremely predictable um, and very lackluster. Okay. So I was not impressed with it. Um, I barely played Wii, so I can't name any games there that I really liked. <laughs> I planned to go and play a Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a crime that I haven't played the Zeldas much, so yeah. Um, but then PS3 was my system of choice, of course. Uh, and there, I mean, I got really into Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5, mm-hmm. two of my favorite games from there. Um, pardon me, uh, Last of Us. Mm. The Uncharted series, namely number two, is my favorite. Yeah! Yeah. Uh, and then uh, my other third favorite game of all time, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. <laughs> and see, that's where when I say my fav- three favorite games of all time, it's not in a specific order of one, two, three. Mm-hmm. It's three games that I can't decide which one I like the best. It's a three-way tie for number one. Mm-hmm. I love, like, Final Fantasy Seven. you know, it hits me in certain ways that I love it. Same with Metal Gear Solid 3, same with Metal Gear Solid 4. It's just those three games are just so incredible that I I can't decide which one I like the most. Mm-hmm. Um, though the one I do go back to play the most frequently is Final Fantasy VII, so I'll say that. <laughs> um, then moving on to the PS4, I don't know right now. Like, <laughs> it's, still, it's still a young system. So Yeah, it's too early to really tell. It's too early for me to pick a favorite game for yet. And, you know, actually, bad enough, my favorite game I've played on my PlayStation 4 so far, GTA 5 Remastered. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I like my PS4, but so far nothing has really come out that's blown my mind yet. Mm, so, yeah. I'm kind of hoping that Arkham Knight will be the first for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Arkham Knight and Bloodborne, I think, have been... The- first two games to really show off that system. I, I, you know what, and I will say, uh, Witcher is doing a good job at, yeah, pushing what the system can do, because it's, it's a, it looks great, it's huge, so it's like, yeah, this definitely feels like a next-gen title, mm-hmm. and it's good, but, yeah, it's just so much to do, as I've said earlier. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so I can't really pick a favorite PS4 game. I'll do that, at, you know, once we're a few years into the cycle of the PS4. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what about the old Vita? Oh, the old Vita. You know, I haven't played enough to really pick a favorite game on there as it stands. I mean, Uncharted, Golden Abyss, probably. Okay. Um, as that, from what I've actually fully played through. And, you know, I mean, I, I could pick, like, I got all my RPGs on there. I got Final Fantasy VII on there. <laughs> so... You know, like, I mainly use it as my portable gaming machine. I don't have too many games on there as it stands. Yeah. I know I still got to play Tearaway. Um, and then, you know, uh, I guess, you know, like Final Fantasy X on that. I could pick that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, I don't do much handheld gaming, actually. That's, there, that's partly why I never even talked about my DS. Despite mm-hmm. the fact that I sort of have oh, a 3DS. <laughs> I don't do much handheld gaming. I buy the console or the systems and then, I don't know. 
maybe it's the way you're seated. I don't like to look down at things. Mm. I don't like to hunch over things. I like to look up at a TV. Fair enough. Yeah. It's weird. I, I get uncomfortable really easily. I hate, I hate sitting down as well. Mm-hmm. I move around lots, and I find it's hard for me to get comfortable playing a handheld game. It's easier for me to get comfortable playing on a big screen. That That's weird, I know, but, you know. <laughs> uh, favorite PC games? I'm not a huge PC gamer. Um, I haven't played enough things that are just on the PC to really name any. Sims, I, I go back to lots. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, it Sims, it's like, you know, I won't touch it for a few years, and then I'll go back and play it for, like, nonstop for, like, two weeks, and then not touch it, like... You know, that's about all I can think of uh, as far as my favorite games goes. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that as soon as we wrap this up, I'll think of some glaring omissions and be like, no. Oh, yeah. I did that, too, after me and Izzy had our discussion. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Cool. That, uh, those are some excellent games. And now the audience knows a little bit more about you. Yeah, like... I don't have any favorite genres. I, I'm pretty universal. Like, I just enjoy things. I used mm-hmm. to say I was huge into RPGs, but then I discovered, I don't know, I just like a good RPG. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I like good first-person shooters. I know you're not a first-person shooter guy, but, hmm. I mean... Unless uh, it's something like Borderlands or Wolfenstein. Yeah, or Destiny. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, no, like I like a good first person. Like I like, as I said, I like Halo. But even though we rag on the series all the time, I loved Call of Duty Four. Mm-hmm. I would say that's probably my. I'd say it's my favorite first person shooter, along with. Should I should have mentioned Call of Duty Four, along with Halo? I'd say it's my favorite first person shooter. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling about uh, Black Ops Three? Um. It looks, it doesn't make me feel like I need to go buy it because, you know, at this point Call of Duty, is, I feel it has really become just such a cash grab because Call of Duty 4 happened right before it became a major cash grab. <laughs> it, it still felt like there was integrity to the series, I felt. But uh, Black Ops 3, it almost looks like the, the, the pace reminds me a bit of like watching people play Titanfall. It's it's a very much faster paced game where it looks very different from the typical Call of Duties. Mm-hmm. It's kind of good because it's like you're trying to inject a little more life mm-hmm. rather than making these regurgitated year in year out shooters. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's still not enough. Like I don't know. For me, the best thing about Call of Duty Four is the story. Like the gameplay was fun, but the story was excellent. And that's something that, in my, in my opinion, uh, no Call of Duty has done since. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that that's where mm-hmm. Call of Duty has really fallen short, in my opinion. <laughs> right on. So yeah, that's that's yeah, that's my overall outlook on games. Cool. All right, well, before we end this segment, I just have one more question for you. Oh. How do you feel about the Final Fantasy VII Remake? <sighs> I'll tell you a story about that, because, I mean, you already know the story, but the listeners might not. Yes. Um, that game was announced on June 14th, which, if you go and look at history, it's also the day that the Chicago Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. Uh, I teach kickboxing on Monday and Wednesday nights so I'm out of the house till varying times um, those days I pretty much I went and taught and it came home right away rather than sticking around to train myself but uh, I ca- so I set the PVR to record the game I put my phone on do not disturb and I'm like I'm not looking at anything I'm not going on the internet I don't want any spoilers about this hockey game <laughs> So, you know, and that's the day that the Sony press conference is happening. So, you know, I'm watching hockey and I'm just like, yes, this is amazing. And then sure enough, the Blackhawks win the Stanley Cup. And I'm like, i got to go on the internet and celebrate. So I, I load up Twitter and I'm like an hour and a half after it's already happened. <laughs> and I'm like, 
and I go on, I'm like, I got notifications. I'm like, oh, yeah, these are probably people tweeting at me being like, yeah, you're happy you won the cup. And I'm like, I go on, and then I, I see some talk about it's happening or something like that. So, okay. And you're like, yeah. And then I see your tweet saying, I know he's watching hockey, but he's going to lose his mind when he sees it. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is happening? And I cl- I'm like, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> Like, the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup, so I was already thrilled. And now it's actually a remake. It's not just it's not just a little bit of an HD touch-up. No, this is a full-on remake. So I was very, very happy. And I said June 14th, I meant 15th. It was June 15th that this was announced. Sorry. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was absolutely thrilled. And it's... Though... Um, I've seen a little bit that since got me a tiny bit concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, like the guy, or whoever, someone was doing an interview and they were saying how like it's a full on remake, which you know, good. But then he mentioned something about uh, gameplay being modernized or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> 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 I I swear if they throw Final Fantasy XIII's combat system in there. Mm. Like You know what they could do, though? They might go more of the Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy XV style. <sighs> Even then, I... Like, Crisis Core had that same system. And while it was fun... It, just, it wasn't the same. No. I, I'd, I'd feel like... At most, I'd want it to feel like X2's combat system. Mm-hmm. Where it was still turn based but faster kind of thing. Yeah, even if they did like ten style, where it was turn based, but you could switch characters in and out on yeah. the fly. Yeah, like have some sort of features like that, but still stay true to the turn based ideal. Mm-hmm. Not not what Final Fantasy thirteen is, where like all the different styles and building up your whatevers and stuff like that. Just you to get to break mode or whatever that was. Yeah, I, I hated that. Like, I, I just hope that at its core, they keep it as true to that as possible. Maybe make it a little sleeker, but that's it. Mm-hmm. So that does have me a little bit worried. Regardless, I'm still going to be buying it because <laughs> I owe it to my love for that. It'll just be good to explore that game. But yeah, I, I do have some concerns now, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and they've said that they're going to be changing stuff to the story and whatnot, too. And... Yeah. I guess there's always a risk involved with a remake of any yep. sort, be it, be it in video games or be it in films. Mm-hmm. It's just, you're never going to please everyone. But hey, even if they do change stuff and whatever, we still have the original Final Fantasy VII. That ain't changing. And that's, that's exactly it. Even if, you know, even if, they do butcher this. The original is still a complete classic that I still enjoy playing to this day. Mm-hmm. So if this one sucks, you know what? I'll play through it the one time, I'll shelf it, and then I'll just go back to the original. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. That's why I never get about people who really get upset, like, oh, it's ruining my childhood. Your, your childhood's still over there, man. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know what? Just... Put it away. Pretend it never happened, and go back to the the classic you love. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you have any other highlights from E3 by chance? Ah, uh, I really enjoyed the presentation of Battlefront. Um, I, uh, as far as new games that excite me, I really, really enjoyed the uh, what they showed for of uh, For Honor. Mm-hmm. That looked really cool. So that's one I definitely have my eye on, as well as. Uh, What's that new PlayStation exclusive one? Horizon Dawn or something? Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, that one looks interesting. I think I'm my eye on that. Uh, beyond that, nothing super super jumped out at me. Mm-hmm. Like Final uh, Final Fantasy Seven clearly stole the show mm-hmm. on that front. Um, I mean Kingdom Hearts, like I was saying to you when we watched the Sony thing. Uh, Square Enix. Or yeah, Square Enix. Sorry. Um, that was, I mean, this got me excited, but I was already excited. Like, it pretty much just confirmed what I thought. It looks mm-hmm. like it looks like Kingdom Hearts on PS4, which yeah. is a good thing. 
Mm-hmm. It looks like that step forward I expect, I'd expect from that franchise, but it doesn't look completely different, mm-hmm. which is the best part. It's just they have something that's classic and great. Let's just stay true to it. So that's got me mm-hmm. excited. Uh, beyond that, I still I liked what I saw of the division, mm-hmm. even if it looked like a bit of a graphical step backwards. Yeah, a rather big graphical step backwards. <laughs> the the concept still intrigues me. Mm-hmm. I've always liked those Tom Clancy shooters, so like that style of military with where it's not just mindless; it's very much more strategic mm-hmm. uh, and tactical. I like that approach. Um, beyond that. Doom 3 got me, or not Doom 3, sorry, uh, the next Doom game, whatever mm-hmm. it is, uh, got me interested as well. Uh, other than that, I don't think there was anything really that blew my mind for me 3. Mm-hmm. Oh, though coming back to Kingdom Hearts, I think someone said something about how they're focusing on more of the new sort of, uh, they wanted to do newer stuff for uh, the Disney Things yeah, that, that yeah we, apparently uh, the game is going to comprise mostly of new worlds. Okay, yeah, so so we don't have to like do Agrabah all over again and stuff like that, which is good. Like, Let's move forward, let's see new stuff. Mm-hmm. Which also makes you really excited, because I love Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a musical level. Well, you know what? I, I was even thinking about that. You said that to me last time. Given how much I love the soundtrack, I don't even think I would mind that much. I already, sing, I already sing the songs at work. I'm, I'm not even joking about that. Um, I know all the words to Let It Go and Do You Want to Build a Snowman. <laughs> Jesus. I seriously do. Uh, so, you know, even if it was a musical level, I'd be a little disappointed because it's not a full level, but mm-hmm. I'd still enjoy it because I love the songs. <laughs> I am so ready to let it go. Okay. <laughs> we end on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, questions and comments. We have none yet again this week. Come on, uh, get your shit together. Indeed. I'm surprised uh, Izzy didn't even shoot us a question on Twitter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's going to do it for another episode of Glitched Out. So, for the first time ever, Big Boss, why don't you take us away? All right. Thank you, boys and girls, for tuning into this week's installment of the Not Cannot Podcast, Glitched Out. Um, that threw a wrench in my plans. I'm really going to have to get used to this. Uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of fun talking about our gaming subjects of the week, and uh, we look forward to doing this again for you. So shoot us some questions, shoot us some comments, and we'd be happy to discuss them. And until then, I've been Big Boss, and as always, your host has been... Lord X. And we'll see you again next time. Until then, you stay classy and keep gaming. And we're glitching out.